Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. This is Peter Cooper uh, from the NCBI. This webinar is called An Insider's Guide to the New My Bibliography. And with me today are Sherry Bailey and Rana Morris, and Sherry is going to be our presenter today. Today, you will be receiving a lot of information on how to navigate this new system. But first, I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us. And thank you for your patience as we go through these growing pains together. As Peter has mentioned earlier, I am from NCBI User Services, and I am your advocate in providing your feedback, your suggestions, and reporting any issues. With that said, please take a moment to jot down the email address to provide your suggestions and feedback on what we're doing right and how we can improve. Let's get started. For those of you who are new to my NCBI, I would like to quickly go over the reasons why you should get an NCBI account. We have videos on our NCBI YouTube channel and online help manuals, which provide step-by-step -step directions for each of these tools. But the main reason why we are here to today is to discuss creating and managing citations within my bibliography. As many of you are aware, one of the easiest ways to log into your account, besides using a bookmark, is to directly go to pubmed.gov. If you don't already have an account, go to pubmed.gov, click register for an account, follow the prompts, click the activation link, which is sent to your email address, and now you're ready to log in. We have officially logged into my NCBI. And on the dashboard, there are uh, many different portlets, such as the ability to have your safe searches ran automatically, create collections that you can share with others, create custom filters, create bio sketches, and even see your recent activity as long as you are logged into your NCBI account at the time of your searches. Now let's get back to my bibliography, which is accessed by clicking the Manage My Bibliography link. Once you have citations in your My Bibliography, you may see a spinning icon. Don't wait for it to finish loading. Just go ahead and click Manage My Bibliography. Now we're at the My Bibliography page. On the upper right-hand side, if you click your username, you will find your login information, your dashboard, which we just came from, publications in my bibliography, which is the screen that we are currently on, account settings. Here is where you're able to update your password, update your email address, link accounts like your institution's credentials, ERA Commons, HRA, and Google, just to name a few. You also have the ability to invite others to manage your account and, of course, log out. Next, in the gray box, you will actually see the name listed on your account. And in this case, the first name is NCBI and the last name is user. Beneath the gray box, if you have an award such as ERA Commons for NIH grants or uh, HRA grants, icons will appear here. This is just another way to verify that your award information is correctly linked to your account. All new accounts are automatically set to private. If you wish to share your bibliography with others, you click on the Make Your Bibliography Public link to reveal the public URL. You do have the option to toggle the link on and off if you wish to restrict viewings of your citations. To share or not to share is completely under your control. Before we go any further, if you run into any issue, the Support Center is a click away. Here you will find self-help articles as well as the ability to contact the help desk. Now, let's go ahead and add a few citations to our account. The first option is from PubMed. There are numerous ways to search PubMed. For example, you can run an author search by using the author full name or last name and initials, 
or even a partial title as I've entered here. Click Search PubMed and you will have your results. In this case, it's just one result. And this is the exact title I was looking for. So I will check the box and add it to my bibliography. I will then have a confirmation saying that it was successfully added, as well as my checkbox is grayed out. From here, I can repeat the process as many times as necessary and then exit out. You may also add citations from a file. The file must be in RIS format. Most reference managers like RefWorks and EndNote can convert the citations to RIS. As you can see, you are given a confirmation box on how many records have been uploaded and updated. Last but not least is adding citations manually. You have the ability to add citations of articles not appearing in PubMed, books, patents, software, and other types of citations as well. Now, we have a few citations in our bib. Let's manage them. First, we will go over the features of both types of accounts that they have in common, meaning that those accounts that are linked to grant, granting agencies like ERA Commons and HRA and those that are not. In Managed Citations, there are two types of dropdowns. The account that is private, meaning that I have not activated my public URL, which is seen here, and accounts that show the public URL. The difference is set to public and set to private. Public citations, which the title implies, can be seen in the public URL. And the private label is for, yep, you guessed it, those that you don't want to be seen in the, in the public URL. Let me give an example. A PI who is not the author on a manuscript but their award funded the manuscript. We use the private label, which is seen on the first citation for their citation. Yes, those of you who previously had an account, the private label has taken the place of other citations. So in short, the PI is responsible for reporting the grant, but only wants to see items they authored in the public URL. Otherwise, you use the private label. Back to manage citations. First, we have copy to a collection. This is a great option if you wish to have separate collections to share without sharing your entire bibliography. And you can add citations to this collection as seen here. Please note only PubMed citations can be copied into this collection. Finally, you can delete citations and you can export some or all of your citations into a RIS file. Back to my Bib homepage. You may also at times encounter a warning message. This occurs when there's either duplicate citations or you have a citation that may match a citation appearing in PubMed. You have two choices. You can either hide the warning or you can resolve it. To resolve the conflict, click the conflict link, determine if the citations are the same, not on the list, or save the decision for another day. In this particular case, the citations are the same, just the author names are out of order. So what happens if you accidentally dismiss the warning box or you discover duplicate citations? Don't fret, it's an easy fix. Step one is locate the duplicate citations and jot down the PMID number. You'll need this later. Step two is click edit citation of the manual citation. A pop-up box will appear. Locate the type field, use the drop-down box and select PMID. Next, in unique ID, you're going to write down or type in, excuse me, the PM ID number. You will receive a confirmation box verifying that you have the right citation and then you simply click yes. So 
we have at least one problem solved. Let's move on to the right side of the screen for filtering and sorting citations. The search box located on the upper right, with this you are able to search by PMC ID, PMID, article title, whole or partial, author name, DOI, or journal title. Let me repeat that again. You are able to search by PubMed ID, PubMed Central ID, article titles, whole or part, author name, DOI, and journal title. You may also sort your, your bibliography by recently updated citations, meaning recently added to your account by publication date or by author name in descending and ascending order. So far, we have reviewed what the accounts have in common. Let's take a quick look at accounts that have linked awards. Under Manage Citations, there is Manage Awards and the ability to create a compliance report. By using the Manage Awards link, you can quickly add awards to multiple citations and or multiple awards to citations. So let's see it in action. First, you're going to select the citations here, and then you're going to go to Manage Citation, Assign Awards. You'll assign the awards. You also have the ability to search for other awards if the awards are not your own. Okay, in this particular one, we selected two awards, and the information has been saved, which is verified here, and we will close the citation window. Let's take a quick look at the first citation that we selected. The count did not change because one of the awards was the same. So instead of three, I have two, meaning that I selected the same award twice. So it will automatically collapse. Before we create a compliance report, let's briefly talk about compliance. I'm sure you've noticed the boxes on the side and they also correspond to the icons in the gray box above. The question mark means public access is not defined. The exclamation point lets you know that the citation is non-compliant. The arrow indicates that the citation is in process and receiving a PMC ID. The green check mark indicates that it has received a PubMed Central ID and is in compliance. Let's say you wish to see citations that are in process, for example. Simply click on the blue arrow located in the gray box above to display only those citations. So our grants are attached and we're finally ready to create a compliance report. To start, we're going to select filter citations. Next, we're going to select the grant, select the citations, Go to Manage Citations, click Compliance Report, fill out the form, which includes first name, middle name, last name, starting page, if that's what you need to put into your report, and you click Download the PDF, which appears here. One of the last features that I want to show you today is the ability to sort all of your records by public access, which is also found in the sorting field. If you have any remaining questions, please take a moment to type them out into the chat box because this concludes our tour of my bibliography, but I have one last thing to show you. Coming soon is a more advanced filtering, which is going to be available probably in about two weeks or so. Grant holders will be able to filter by multiple grants and everyone will be able to filter citations by citation type, public and private. This is my final request before we take a few questions. We need your help to make our product better. As you think of features that you and others could benefit from, please write us. I would like to thank you again for joining me, and on behalf of the NCBI User Services, we look forward to hearing from you. Hi, Sherry. It's a pretty uh, common question I think people have uh, that came in fairly early. 
as you guys make updates to the website, to my bibliography and other my NCBI accounts, um, they would like to know, are their accounts and account information automatically going to be transferred? Do they need to worry about updating their accounts every time the user interface is changed? They do not. Everything should be in its proper place, even though the interface may change. Another question, is there a plan to make a change in the number of items displayed per page, or is it always going to be listed as is right now? That is a perfect suggestion using the email that's on the screen now. Please suggest it. We make changes based on user needs. So there are a number of librarians online who do a lot of training for MyBib and Science CV and uh, co public access compliance. They want to be able to create slide sets for their presentations, and they wanted to know they don't have any grants. Is it possible to get a fake account so that they can actually create those slides? What would be a reasonable way to maybe do that? Right into the email address that you see there, and we can check with the development team to see what we can do. So they're interested and excited about the changes in my bibliography, and they wanted to know, are there any plans to improve Science CV since they're actually obviously connected to that? Stay tuned. It is happening. It will be coming in the near future. So there are a number of suggestions that have come into the questions pod, which is a great idea. Um, other people have also mentioned in that they do some training too and have actually validated some other features and we will take all of those and bring them to the team to see what they can do. Um, there's a question here, are you going to update the My NCBI help with information about making these citations public and private? Yes, that should be available now on, let's see, if you go to the My Bibliography documentation, the website right there, it should show all the current screenshots that I showed you today. If the citations are appearing where the user is a PI but not an author, yes. so they are on a grant but not an author, can you just go over that one more time, what to set private and what you should set? Okay, if the URL is already public, it's going to show everything there. So a PI who is not the author on the grant, what you want to do is select those citations, go to manage citations, and you want to set those cite citations to private, meaning that it will not show in the public URL. Great. Is there currently a limit that we know about for the number of citations that can be held in my video? Actually, that is a great question, and it is part of the reason why we update it to My Bibliography 3.0. There currently is not a limit. You will just have multiple pages. That'll help those researchers that have hundreds and hundreds of citations. Yes. There, is there any intention to add additional features in addition to the, the filter feature that you showed for specific grants? Are there other uh, sort options or feature options that you guys are thinking about, or would you guys consider taking in additional sort or feature references, like for sort, things like maybe uh, most relevant to grants and things? This is why we're asking for your feedback. Um, we want to make this product as usable to you not just what we think that you need. This is why we're asking for feedback. Um, let me put the address back up there again for you. We want to make this product the best that it can be to fit your needs. So here's another question about public and private. It sounds like something that um, would be good to address, not only the FAQs, but maybe even in documentation on the system. Um, so uh, one of the librarians says, this is happening to a client of mine, NIH has told him that he needs to remove citations appearing in his My Bibliography for those which he is not an author. Is that what the private thing is supposed to do? Will, by identifying them as private, remove them from the citation list? Okay. It removes it not from the citation list. Everything will be there. Underneath the citation itself, it will say private. If your PI or the person uses the actual link, that you, public URL, the only thing that they're going to see are those things that are considered public. 
anything with the private label will be hidden. We used to be able to select the view citations in PubMed. This is a useful feature as citations could then be easily sent to EndNote or however. Is that a feature that they're thinking about adding back to my bibliography or is there another way to do it? Currently, there is not another way to do that. If you could please um, jot that down and stick that in our suggestions, we would greatly appreciate it. So there's a, a large number of, si of suggestions, which is great, and we will compile all of these and send them in with Sherry to the My Bibliography team. One person says, hey, I've got some suggestions for Science CV2, particularly about ORCID integration. Is that email address, info at ncbi.nlm.nih.gov, also the email address that they should send in suggestions for Science CV and even my NCBI? Absolutely. Please use this address. This is not just limited to my bibliography. You can use it for anything dealing with my NCBI or NCBI in general. We'll make sure it gets to the correct development team. There are a few additional, a few, a, a, only a couple of additional questions that are very technical in nature. So we will include those in the FAQ document so that the answers can really be written down for you. And those will be out, what, Peter, in about a week or so in the, uh, on the FTP site. So thank you very, very much for participating in this particular webinar. Keep tuned to additional webinars that we're going to have throughout the rest of the year.